Now, was I the only kid that was kind of sleeping through the uh, spectrum of light? Remember we did this back in science at school where you'd break up a prism, you know, use a prism to break up the wavelengths of light and go all the way from the blues all the way up to the res. Now, in the same way, we can do the exact same thing with a sound and we go from the lows all the way up to the highs. Things like a double bass all the way up to a xylophone. Now, the lowest frequency that we can hear as humans is around 20 hertz, and that goes all the way up to 20,000 hertz, or we call it 20 kilohertz or 20K for short. So between 20 hertz, which is virtually zero compared to 20 uh, kilohertz, we have a bandwidth of approximately 20,000 hertz, about a 20K range. And of course, that starts diminishing the older you get and certainly if you punish your ears you can lose some top end but for argument's sake let's just call it a 20k range so here's a pop quiz where would you find the mid-range point between basically 0 and 20k if you split any measurement you know between a 20 a 0 and 20 yards you'd get 10 right or 0 and you know any other number when you split it down the middle, you would think that the mid-range would be 10K. And that'd be a good guess, but it would be absolutely dead wrong. And here's the reason why. Every frequency that we hear, if we start off at 20 here, once we go up an octave, it doubles every octave we go up. So after the first octave, it goes from 20 hertz to 40 hertz. If we go up another octave, then that would be 80 hertz, double that, and then that would go to 160 and 320, 640. We'll round this one over here to 1.25K, and then it would go up to 2.5K, uh, 5K, and then 10K, and then all the way up to 20K. So you can kind of see that the, the octave relationship is completely linear octave one, octave two, octave three, octave four, and so on. However, the Hertz relationship is not linear at all. It is what you would call, it's completely exponential. It goes up dra dramatically the further you go up to the right hand side. So let's have a look at the last octave. You go down from 20K and that's where you'd find 10K, right? So one octave down from the very top thing you can hear, that's where you'd find 10K. And if you halve that again and again and again, ends up that mid-range is around 1K. So let's make this very practical. Right now you, you, you may be going, okay, what's with all these numbers? Let's take a kind of a thought experiment here where you have two engineers arguing about where the thump of a kick drum is, where the fundamental of a kick drum is. And engineer A says, oh, the thump of the kick drum is around 60 hertz. And then, and this is, by the way, this is very important because then when you start EQing, you want to know where these numbers are, right? And the first one says it's 60 hertz. And the engineer B says, no way, no way. I think it's around 560 hertz. And so they go, um, okay, well, let's um, agree to disagree just for the moment. What about the sheen of a vocal? Where does that live? Kind of the air, the, the, the breath of, of a vocal, where does that live? Well, engineer A says, well, that's around 13K, 13,000 hertz. And engineer B says, no way, I really think that's around 15K. So again, they're not agreeing on where these frequencies are. In the case of the, of the thump of the, of the kick drum, the fundamental of the kick drum, they're about 500 hertz or about half a K apart. But look over on the sheen side, they are actually 2K, 2,000 hertz apart on where they're kind of disagreeing about where that sheen. If you wanted to add some air to a vocals, they're 2K apart. But here's the really, really interesting thing here. In, the term, in terms of the thump of the kick drum, engineer A is absolutely right and engineer B is completely off. There is no way in heck that the thump or the fundamental of a kick drum is at 560 hertz. So you're, you're thinking, well, if they're just a half a K apart, then they must be totally apart on the sheen side. But here's the interesting thing. 
Engineer A is right, and you know what? Engineer B is pretty much right. I wouldn't argue between a 13K or 15K, it's kind of potato, potato to me. How can that be that we have four times the spread on the sheen and both could be right, but the thump is absolutely, one is correct and one is completely wrong. Well, let's have a look at our, um, at our numbers again. Remember, Engineer A put the thump of the kick drum down at around 60 hertz. Look at where 560 hertz is. <laughs> Engineer B, that's completely wrong. No way is the fundamental of a kick drum. If you were trying to get some more oomph down at the low end of your, of your kick drum and you try to dial up 560 hertz, you'd be missing it by a football field, right? But let's look at the sheen side. 13K lives about here. But 15K lives like right there because of the exponential numbers in Hertz. You can see that on the right hand side, even though it's 2K difference, there's a, there's, you know, it's a very minuscule um, uh, span between 13 and 15K compared to 60 and 560 Hertz. I find this can really be a stumbling, block, a stumbling block for a lot of rookie engineers. The numbers down low are far more important to get right than the numbers up high. You'll still want to be right you know, uh, up there, but you can kind of fudge those, those figures a little bit more than the lower ones. Um, the way I tend to work is naming things certain octaves like rumble or boxiness or shrillness or air, for example. Given that our bandwidth of hearing falls in a nice, neat number of 10 octaves, I te that tends to be kind of a handy way to grasp all of this. Now, by the way, that, that totally makes sense when you look at 31 band EQs, graphic EQs. They're sometimes called third octave EQs. That makes perfect sense because if you have 10 octaves with each band uh, has three per octave, you'll come up with about 30 bands. So 31 band graphic EQs allow you to sculpt your sound, boosting and cutting narrow frequencies across that spectrum. They're great for cutting out problems, problem frequencies in monitors and also for your front of house uh, as well.